In this video, we're going to continue looking at trigonometric equations, but look at a few things we haven't covered in the last two videos, as well as some different hints when solving them. So, we'll begin by looking at an example, and this is that 4 cos squared theta is equal to 3 on 4. So this is different as we have now cos squared. So previously we've only looked at cos, sine, and tan in equations, but now I've got a cos squared. So, okay, well that should be equal 3, not 3 on 4. But, yeah. So if we have equals 3, then when we take 4 to the other side, we get cos squared theta is equal to 3 on 4. So all you want to do, it's similar to before, we want to isolate the trigonometric function by itself, then we get the cos squared is equal to 3 on 4. Then we square root both sides, so we get cos theta is equal to the square root of 3 on 4. Now you can split up the square root, so you have the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, you should be able to identify that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So that means we get the square root of 3 on 2. Because theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 on 2. And up there, the really important part is you have to put plus or minus in at each stage. And the reason why it's plus or minus is because if you have something like x squared is equal to a, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a, because it could be the negative square root of a, the negative square root of a squared is just equal to a. Yeah, is just equal to a. So you don't know if it's going to be positive or negative. So you have plus or minus the square root of 3 on 2. Now the standard theta for square root of 3 on 2 is pi on 6, and that's for the first quadrant. But now which quadrant do we care about? Well, it can be positive or negative, so it can be in all four quadrants. So that means you're now going to have theta is equal to two, like imagine if it was positive, so if it was positive we'd have two pi k plus or minus pi on six, where k is an integer, and we'd also have theta is equal to, and theta is equal to two pi k plus or minus five pi on six, where k is an integer. So pi on six, because it's a base and we have it there, and then also if it's going to be negative, as well, then you have to account for this, where this is pi on 6, and therefore that angle along there is 5 pi on 6. Now you can simplify this down, so it would be a good practice to try and simplify it down. If you wrote this as the answer, they'd probably accept it and nothing would be wrong, but you could, technically it would be better to simplify it. So what you could do is you could realise that you have pi on 6 along this line here. Then we also care about the other solution of pi on 6 in the third quadrant. So that means we're going to get a straight line. So it's going to be similar to tan. Then we're going to have a second straight line that goes down here. So we'll have that line there, which is equal to pi on 6. And that line there, which is equal to pi on 6. So we could write it now as the theta, looking at this one, so this one along here, this line. So theta is equal to pi on 6 plus pi k, where k is an integer. And you should see this sort of form from the tan, and that's because we're looking at a straight line. So now looking at 2, we can see the, this straight line by going theta is also equal to negative pi on 6. So negative pi on 6 plus pi k, where k is an integer. But now we can combine these two into one. So you're rubbing this off to get some more room. So we'll rub off the side here. We're going up to the top. We can see that theta is equal to pi k plus or minus pi on 6, where k is an integer. So that is the solution to this question here. So as I said, probably down there, that would be fine, but simplifying it down would be technically a simpler answer. But the main thing to realise with the cos squared is you can have plus or minus, which means you have to account for all four regions. Now with your calculator, when you put it in to solve a trigonometric equation, like solve sine x dot 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 dot, then it will give it as a general solution. And that can be useful if you want a general solution, but if not, you have to restrict the domain. 
So it's really important that you learn how to do this on your calculator. So it's often like this. You have an equation which is equal to something else. You book comma x or whatever you want to solve for, such as theta. And then if you're looking at x, you draw a straight line, then you can put the restriction that you want for x or theta or whatever you want to put there. Like y, z, etc. However, even if this isn't the way you do it, the form you put in your calculator, it's really important that you learn how to do it with your specific calculator you're using, as it's quite hard if you've got a, quite a large domain, you want to get lots of solutions, and they give you a general solution, you're going to have to sub ones in, and it will get quite complicated, and you're wasting unnecessary time, especially if it's a multiple choice question. So make sure you do know how to use it for your specific calculator. So lastly, we'll look at another question. So this is a 2 sine 3x is equal to square root of 2. Now we've looked at a similar question before, however now there's a domain restriction. Before we found it for the general solution, but now there's a domain. So you should be able to calculate this and work out the answer, so working out general solutions, summing things in. However, you're with the domain restriction, you're not sure how far to go on either side, especially when you've got something like 3x. So it's often um, good to make sure that you have a way that you don't waste all your time just checking solutions. So we'll start off this question like a standard question. So we isolate sine 3x and we get that is equal to root 2 on 2. So we're looking at the first and second quadrant with theta equaling pi on 4 as the base angle. Then I'm going to let a equal 3x and I'll get sine a is equal to the square root of 2 on 2. But at this stage, I want to change the domain in, with regards to a. So what I can do here is I can sub in x. Now I know that a is equal to 3x, therefore x is equal to a on 3. Summing that into the domain, I get negative pi greater than a on 3 is greater than pi. Therefore, negative 3 pi greater than a greater than or equal to 3 pi. So now I've got it in terms of a, which will be useful when I solve for a. So solving for a, I get that a is going to equal pi on 4, and it's also going to equal 3 pi on 4, and then plus or minus 2 pi of either of these. So the first thing I do is I check for the large values of pi. So I start with the smaller value, so I'm starting with this value here, and I go pi on 4 plus 2 pi. Is that still within this range? Well, it's less than 3 pi, so it's all good. Then I get the second number, and I add it to 2 pi. Is this still within 3 pi? Yes, it is, because 3 pi and 4 isn't greater than pi. Then I go pi and 4 plus two, 4 pi, because after 2 pi, you go to 4 pi, then 6 pi. Now, I can't look at this result, or not look, I mean, use this result, because 4 pi plus pi and 4 is going to be greater than 3 pi, so it's outside the range. Then I look for the negative results. So now with the negative, you want to start with a bigger result. So 3 pi on 4 minus 2 pi, and then pi on 4 minus 2 pi. Now this is going to be less than negative 3 pi, because this is even going to be less than negative 2 pi, so that's fine, that's fine. Then 3 pi on 4 minus 4 pi. Now because we can, you can work that out, or you can realise that it's actually going to be more negative than negative 3 pi, because 3 pi on 4 is less than pi, so it's going to equal 3 pi on 4 minus 16 pi on 4, which will give us negative 13 pi on 4, which as you can see is more negative, or the magnitude is greater than negative 3 pi, which is negative um, 12 pi on 4. So that's going to be out as well. So I've got my different values there. So I'm going to get myself more room. I'm going to rub this out. And then I'll start calculating up here. So that means I now know that A is equal to, you calculate these, so start with the most negative. So negative 2 pi is negative 8 pi on 4. Then plusing that with pi on 4 gives us negative 7 pi on 4. Working this one out will give us negative 5 pi on 4. Then next one is pi on 4. 3 pi and 4. And you can see that there's a difference of 8 between those two because 8 on 4 is 2 pi. 8 on 4 is 2 and then there's pi in both. Then negative 5 and 3 is 8. And you can 
just see the pattern and work out the other ones or you can calculate it like this. So if you see the pattern then it will be 3 pi on 4, the next one is going to be 9 pi on 4 and then this one is going to be 3 plus 8, so 11 pi on 4. Now we need to convert it to x, but we know that a is equal to 3x. So that means we divide everything by 3, we get that x is equal to negative 7 pi on 12, negative 5 pi on 12, pi on 12, 3 pi on 12, 9 pi on 12, and 11 pi on 12. So you can use the base and then use the pattern. However, you can see here that all these x values are within this domain here. And that means you only have to find one value that's too big for the domain and one value that's too small. And then by changing the domain for a, we don't have to worry and keep thinking back to x. We just think about it for a, then we can convert it to x and it will be already in the domain for x that we want to find.